okay, I need some help from the viewers. Okay. I'm really excited. There's going to be a healthy soda pop coming out. And I need the viewers to tell me, is this a healthy thing or is it a marketing thing? I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. Welcome to Talking with Docs. We are talking about Pepsi Prebiotic Cola. Finally, something I can drink, enjoy, and is good for me. First innovation by Pepsi, they say in 20 years. Yes. 20 years. Prebiotic Cola sounds interesting. All right. Well, let's figure it out. Let's figure out. Okay. Is this a marketing thing? or is this actually a soda pop that's healthy for Leave you? a comment if you tried it, what you think about it, if you what you feel about pop, all of it, leave it in the comments. Yeah, okay, so let's say, what's a prebiotic? Can we start with that? Sure, so prebiotic is a type of fiber. So there's all sorts of different kinds of fibers, soluble fiber, insoluble fiber, and particularly prebiotic fiber. So all prebiotic fiber mm -hmm. um, is fiber, but not all fiber. Is prebiotic. There you go. It's a yin yang. No, so, a yin -yang thing. so the unique thing about prebiotic fiber, essentially, it's it's a food for your gut microbiome. Yeah. So bacteria in your stomach have the ability to break this down, particularly through a butyrate pathway to release short chain free fatty acids to feed and make your gut microbiome healthy. So right. prebiotic fiber or prebiotics, you don't even have to include the fiber; it's kind of redundant are good for you in that they help your gut microbiome. Right, and don't get it confused with probiotics. Pro, you know, like right. yogurt and things have, or totally. fermented food, well, fermented foods have prebiotics. But like yogurt, for example, has probiotics in it. Probiotics are actually those bacteria yes. that you need in your gut. Right. So this Pepsi, no way, has probiotic in it because the probiotic would not survive in the Pepsi environment. Yes. So it's really just a prebiotic, which is just like, fiber in there that doesn't get dissolved by the Pepsi somehow and stays in your in your gut for your gut microbiome. Yeah, and this includes things like inulin, fructo um, oligosaccharides, galacto oligosaccharides, and resistant starches, kind of that potato that you cook, put in the fridge, and then eat it the next day and it spikes your sugar less. These all have that prebiotic right. fiber. And inulin, natural sources, so say you're like, even before the end of the video, we're like, well, where, where does it come from? Well, things like garlic, onions, um, asparagus and bananas. You know, everyone says, oh, don't eat bananas. They're not good for you, which I always thought that doesn't make any sense. I love bananas. I know. I love bananas. One, I had one like 20 minutes ago. I have one in my bag for today. Really? There yeah. You go. Uh, as well as those overnight starches. Okay. So this new Pepsi yep. is uh, being marketed now. Okay. I don't know if it's out yet. It might be out when this video is released. It might not. Yeah. Um, but the idea is Pepsi Co. is trying to be healthier or make it look like they're trying to be healthier by putting this prebiotic in it. They've also reduced drastically the amount of sugar compared okay. to a regular. How many calories in this drink? It's like 30, I think. 30 calories right. compared to what's a regular can, like 180 or 130 so. or something like that. Yeah. And um, the amount of sugar, instead of like your typical 39, 40 grams of sugar in a can of pop, yeah. now you've got five grams of yeah. cane sugar. Interesting they say cane sugar. So. Cane sugar is from sugar cane, and that leads to regular sugar, and like refined sugar. And same with beets, lead to refined sugar. So cane sugar is really no better than any other sugar. I think it's interesting that they choose to use the word cane to try to trick you a little bit. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe they're just trying to be honest. I, okay. Right. Maybe they're trying to be honest. But I'd say it's just sugar, five grams of sugar. Okay. And it's mm. going to come in two flavors. Yeah. Vanilla cola. Uh, yeah, cherry vanilla and regular. Right. Cherry vanilla <clears throat> and regular cola. Flavor. Um, and it's also going to have some natural sweeteners. Right, natural sweeteners, uh, the two of them are stevia and monk fruit. What's interesting about these, they provide that sweet taste, mm -hmm. but there's none of the fear around uh, artificial sweeteners like aspartame and sucralose and those kinds of things. So, uh, look, there's recent studies, uh, including systematic reviews and meta-analyses, no link to cancer or disruption of your gut microbiome, and there's a possibility that maybe it, it can improve insulin resistance a little bit, but generally I'd say it's kind of a neutral health response. Right. And then the last thing it has is the prebody fiber. How much? You've got three grams Whoa. of inulin in there. Three, three grams? Three That's grams. A, not much. That's not a lot. It's not a lot at all. So your daily requirements for fiber, we've talked about this in other videos to help reduce your hemorrhoids and things like that, 25 to 40. Yeah. You know, and most people in North America do not get enough fiber. Okay. So um, you're getting three grams in a can. Three grams. So better than nothing. Better than nothing. But if this is your fiber <laughs> strategy, it probably won't work. I, okay? I, would, I would agree with that. So the question is now, are they trying to be healthy Yeah. or is this just a marketing thing? So, so I think my take is probably that they're trying to do both. Okay. I think deep down, mm -hmm. the scientists would tell you that this is going to make a mild benefit at most. Okay. Potentially none, but mild. Mm -hmm. 
but reduce some of the negative sides of regular cola. So I'd say they're, they're thinking they're maybe gonna grab some of the non-cola drinkers, but I'd say if you don't drink pop, this is probably not gonna be enough to make you drink it. But I think the other people are saying, I wanna reduce my amount of pop. Yeah. This might say, well, if, if I have the, the prebiotic version, maybe I can have it's a, a couple bit. extra cans. And the reduced sugar. Yeah. Although you could have a diet pop in the other case, so I guess right. really it is the prebiotic. Now, there's, did Pepsi think of this? There's been an interest in having a healthier soda pop Right? Yeah, Poppy. sure. Poppy was a, I never heard of it. My kids came, hey, yes, they, said, they said, hey, look, there's a healthy drink, healthy pop. Like, I don't know about that. But, you know, we bought some. Yeah. And I don't love the taste personally of the Poppy. Sure. But Pepsi purchased Poppy. That's a nice alliteration there. For two bill. Two, yeah, yeah. Two billion. Two, two billion dollars. And they, they had two grams of prebiotic fiber. Just two grams. And they added actually apple cider vinegar yeah, apple and some cider. other artificial sweeteners. So yeah, some, pe some people love it. People in my house love it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, it's not yeah. my thing. Yeah. I mean, if it's, there's, there's nothing else to drink and then yeah. I still probably, yeah, I, I, I mean, I've had a few cans here and there. Yeah. So anyways, that, that's where that sort of idea of a healthy pop sort of started, I right. think. Although years ago, there was another can of pop that was supposed to be healthy for you. It's called C+. Do you remember C+. And the orange drink, yeah. the abnormally orange drink. It didn't yeah. look healthy orange, I'll tell you I, that. Well, when I was a kid, I thought, oh, I'm going to be healthy today. I'm going to have a C plus because it's got <laughs> vitamin C in it. I thought I was doing myself a favor, right? Because yeah, that's no. how good the marketing was. Yeah. Uh, but so since then, there's never really been a healthy can of pop. No, but what I would say is the, the beverage industry is, is ginormous. Oh, my God, yeah. And, and they're always changing. Like, look, even like alcoholic beverages to do non-alcoholic drinks mm -hmm. or all the different kinds of water, you know, whether it's smart water or vitamin yeah. water, whatever. Sure. And then plus the push of, of sure. sodas to try to be more healthy. So yeah. there is there is a push to try to find something healthy that you can drink. FYI, Poppy is being sued, I think, oh. for making those false health claims. Like saying that it had too much fiber? Like not, not fiber, enough or just fiber? Saying, no, not enough fiber to move the needle on the gut microbiome. Like it's just not really doing anything. Uh, so they're making some health claims, but they're like, really not delivering on those health claims. So that's the nature. My take home is if you're looking for the healthiest choice is to drink water. We've always water. said that. Yeah. Water just makes sense, but it's not very fun. Having said that, I'm really excited. I'm going to try it when it comes out. I, well, when it comes out, I'm really going to read the label closely and see yeah. what's in there. And But I think the take home message is, yeah, this is not a healthy option. Nope. It may be less bad for you than other cans of pop that are out there or soda pops that are out there. Yeah. But really, it's not, it's not gonna be something that you're gonna try and purposefully include in your diet for health reasons. There you go, that's our hot take. Hey Brad, do you know how many subscribers we have on YouTube now? One million. That's right, that's why we're wearing these glasses. <laughs> if you're a subscriber, thank you very much. If you're not, help us to get to a million and one. Thanks to my brother-in-law, Ben, who made these glasses for us. Oh, no way. Yep, awesome. on his 3D printer. And if you know where we just stole that script from and the idea to wear these glasses, leave a comment. There's a very common clip you see on YouTube.